do you make a test garment sometimes called twirl or muslin because sometimes I find them really useful to make and this week I've made two so I'm just going to show share with you the ones that I've made um, and later on in the video I'm also going to just share all your makes for January as part of the Say Your Colours 22 challenge so stay tuned for that um, but I just want to start off by saying I bought the Deer and Doe Melio shirt and I cut out, um, the pattern is layered, so I, I printed three layers, I did it at home, three sizes, and then I realized that I'd cut a size like completely too small for what I am. I didn't really double check it. I sewed it up and it was so tight, I showed it in one of my previous videos. I thought I was going to have to cut a slightly bigger size and then do a full bust adjustment and then drop the darts, um, the bust darts down by an inch as well. Everything was a bit out of whack. But then I reprinted the pattern last weekend, bit a bigger size, cut a bigger size to what I had, um, and I'll step back so you can see where I'm at. So I haven't um, sewed down what is the button band because you literally just fold it over a couple of times. So I've just tacked it at the top and the bottom, so it will sort of fold over a bit more than what perhaps it's looking. But I think the bust darts look like they're falling in the right place. I mean, I'm trying this on over a t-shirt and a cardigan, so possibly might be a bit too big. But I thought, that's not bad. Now with this, I'm trying to set back. You've got a curved hem and it drops lower at the back than it does the front. I quite like that though. And previously it was really tight across here so I did um, I did do a one inch narrow shoulder adjustment if you are interested to know how I do that let me know in the comments down below and then I can just do um, include that in my next video it will literally only take probably less than a minute to show you what I do but um, with these so obviously this has um, like a grown on sleeve and then it has like a band so I haven't put that on but I feel there's so much more movement in that and I think it'd be nice and airy. I don't want anything too fitted because with the blouse I do find then sometimes they, the buttons come undone and it gapes. So I do want a bit of ease but not so much that it looks like I'm wearing, you know, like a night shirt or something. Now a lot of people have said they can get the shirt out of one metre. I haven't checked so I don't know if they're shortening it or whether you can actually get this whole shirt out of one meter. I would be quite interested to know, but um, I find it useful to do a muslin. I call it muslin in case it always sounds a bit fancy if I call it twirl. Um, but yeah, I try to do a muslin when it comes to woven garments because I've made things before in out of things like um, curtain lining and old duvet covers I got from the charity shop just to sort of see where everything lies because I think although like with the shoulders I could measure my shoulder and then measure the pattern or I could compare it to something else um, but I just felt it needed to be hitched up I'm finding that I'm doing that adjustment more and more often I also shorten this by one inch at the waist I'm doing that mo on virtually everything that I make that's what I'm sort of doing so I have these kind of adjustments in my mind but I still will never cut straight into my main fabric. I think it's just I'm in the past that I have, I thought, oh, you know what, I'm just gonna go for it. And then it's been too big or sometimes too small and it's not that great when you try and trim it down. It's not always in proportion. It doesn't always look that great. So I don't know whether you are all on the same um, wavelength as myself. Do you bother? Um, I usually say for woven garments, yes, I do, do make a test um, test garment. For knit projects, I try to dive straight in. But this week, I did make a test garment. Now, in one of my previous videos, I showed you that I had some fabric arrive. It was French Terry. The quality was awful. It was sort of almost like plucked, like pilled. It had fade marks on and it felt a bit rough. I did get a re did receive a refund for that fabric and I didn't have to return it and I thought rather than just put it straight in the textile recycling I will do a mock-up a test garment for the I mean I don't know if you can see from this like you can see like different colors on it and um, the Tilly and the Buttons Billy sweatshirt now it's the sweatshirt that probably everyone made and I'm well past the trend of that and now we're going into spring I'm probably a bit out of season 
but I wanted a sweatshirt to replace the one I had previously been making which is the Simplicity De Toast House 7 collaboration 8529 I think off the top of my head I'll put it in the description box below but that one has a drop shoulder and I did and it's quite a sort of loose on the neckline now I heard with the billy that it was quite tight around the neck and it was quite high up but I quite like that because then it means no t-shirt or anything is like poking out so no chance of like colour clash and because this one actually sits on your shoulder rather than a drop shoulder it's a different look and I thought I might feel it's a smarter one and less sort of sloppy I'm not sure so this obviously is in the dark grey I still hate my overlocker every time I lift up the foot um the foot actually just stays there because the screw like comes undone so the foot then just so where the screw isn't holding the foot um something happens and so the foot just it doesn't go up and down with the lever so I have to get my screwdriver out and sort of adjust it put the foot on it again and then screw it back in like all the time um I also had to I think it was on this making this I actually re-thread it numerous times as well so they just snap on the left needle I think it is it keeps snapping so and I didn't follow the notches if there were notches so when I put this bottom band on it has sort of kinked the fabric up of it and then also I think in one place it didn't even I couldn't fit it onto itself so there was a gap I don't think it caught the seam all the way around but I'm not going to wear this it was literally just to try it out so I definitely think that um making it with ribbing I don't know why I'm putting this up well I'm going to take my cardigan off I don't um I think that having a sweatshirt or something and using ribbing is so much nicer on the neck bands and I think with this one um I do really want something a bit more interesting Ugh, the struggle of you know anyone wears glasses right here we go so I think it's not too bad it doesn't feel too sloppy I took half an inch out of the sleeve length because I'm finding whenever I'm making a sweatshirt sleeves are really long on me the sleeves are really coming out quite long and I had heard actually on the bit after I'd cut this traced it and cut it um somebody said that on the billy it's not that long well it's fine for me and I shortened it by half an inch and that's quite a nice length especially for this time of year I don't want it all gathered at the at the wrist so it just has like the bottom band here and then going round obviously but the neckline the neck band it sits oh you can see my t-shirt but I don't feel that it's like sort of strangling me and I do think I've had ready to wear ones like this and I prefer it on a higher crew neck but that may just me and I wasn't sure if the shoulders were going to sit on my shoulders or whether I'd have to do narrow shoulder adjustment but I think that is coming out okay I was sort of a bit lumpy bumpy on the um overlock seam it always seems to come out a bit strange nothing really lines up on this when it comes to seams because I was literally just chuck you know like pulling it out but like I have said on previous ones oh this isn't too bad sometimes you get to pull it up when you make the bands out of the same fabric you just don't have that stretch and then it kind of sits out a bit I wasn't sure if it was quite boring to make in a plain fabric I'm glad that I'm not going to use this grey now because it's more of a wintry sort of colour I have seen some people who have the sort of is it the vinyl like um letters that you just iron on or some kind of motif or to make it in a nice bright um from my cool winter palette nice bright like turquoise or something but then it's always tricky trying to find like ribbing or cuffs and things which are going to match that main fabric if this if the shop that you've seen online has the really nice fabric they don't always have a matching band and i didn't really want to go contrasting but i'm not sure this is um this is what i'm thinking so far and i have a sweatshirt simpl the simplicity one it's a drop shoulder it's quite big on the arms but i wore it in the summer so when we went to the beach when it got a bit chilly later on in the afternoon i just popped that on over the top and so i know that although sweatshirts normally are sort of associated with autumn winter time i think it's quite a good spring summer i actually all year round obviously it all just cut you wouldn't want a fleece lined sweatshirt for the summer but something like the french terry because it's quite a, a thin fabric and if you go for the loop back rather than a brush back like fleecy one 
I think that's quite a nice option, but I don't know. A bit of embellishment, otherwise I think it's quite a boring, it's a basic, it's a wardrobe basics, and I do have a video all about wardrobe basics and are they worth sewing and it's worth just going there and just reading the comments on that video because it's quite an interesting discussion so i will link that one down in the description box below if you want to check that out because it relates to when i made a navy cardigan a marlowe cardigan and and it's something that i've worn absolutely loads it's quite boring to make um so i don't know if you feel the same as well oh for sizing reference i think i made a six i didn't actually write it down because i traced the size off um and this is the pattern here so it's the two buttons bully so you can do that as a dress or there are options um for like a balloon sleeve for a dress or for the top or the straight one so obviously i made this version up here um I think that will that will be my new sweatshirt pattern and I will ditch um, the making the simplicity one because I made that quite a few times last year and I just feel like I want something with a bit of a slimmer silhouette than that one. This is how I now store my patterns. Now I have mentioned this in one of my decluttering videos because I used to have brown A4 manila envelopes and if I had a PDF or something like literally ramming them in the envelope would then rip down the side and it was such a mess and i had one whole calax um drawer unit stuffed full of pdf so i literally scribbled on with a sharpie or the biro on the on the outside what it was and then i had another one which had all my big four patterns in so i had i basically kept every single pattern sewing pattern I had or I'd bought since I started sewing like a number of years ago I had so many it was ridiculous and most of them had been cut into so I were and they hadn't been a great fit or I hadn't repeated it so I was never going to go back and then try and guess where the line was, lines were to upgrade like to grade up and things so I've condensed two drawers into one and then with any PDF or with any pattern that I trace I've started tracing patterns so that I'm I've still got the original intact I then put them in these folders here. Now these are just from um, Amazon and I have, oh, I'm not gonna focus, it's probably trying to focus on my face, in pencil, um, I guess I can reuse. I think I bought a box of 50. So I'm just writing down the pattern things. And this one, because this is a bought pattern, so it's got these elastic bits and it expands out. So this one, because it's a bought um, paper pattern, but I have traced it, it's all in there. But with a PDF that I have printed off at home, I'm trying to stick on the size chart on the inside and the pattern on the outside. Um, let me just show you. So here I have the Grayline Studio Archer shirt. And so I printed out the actual, um, like the front page. And at the top, I've also put the seam allowances half an inch because um, Trying to, trying to sift through and it's not a traditional seam allowance it's actually a bit of an annoying seam allowance because i couldn't find i couldn't work out which markings on my sewing machine was the half an inch because um they they didn't fall under three eighths five eighths half an inch there's no marks really for, anyway i digress um as i open it up so then here i've put um the measure the size chart so I've got all those measurements to hand and then the pieces that I've printed out are all tucked in here. And because it sort of expands out a bit and you've got these elastic pieces here, it all keeps it together. And so now I have a really neat filing. And when I store them in my drawer, because I've got the name on it, I can just thumb through and find the pattern that I'm looking for. Whereas before I had to get all the patterns out, see what I wanted, then shove them all back in again. So I've made the muslin, or if you want to call it, for the Melio, I just haven't, I just couldn't be bothered to then make it. So last weekend I did the Billy and I just made the whole thing, whizzed it through on my overlock. Well, I say whizzed it through, re-threaded like three times, attached the fur two or three times. Um, and eventually that got done just to quickly see what kind of size it was coming out as. So I now have that in mind. I don't think I'm gonna make any adjustments to that pattern but it's just a case of looking for the right fabric. I'm not in a desperate need for one, but that is something I know I've tested it out. And so if I spot the right fabric and the right ribbing, I can buy that and then just make that. And then that will just fit in with my wardrobe. And with the blouse or shirt, the deer and doe one, um, I do have shirting fabric, but I bought two meters of the fabric because I originally was going to make a long sleeve shirt. And then I realised when I have a long sleeve, I'm always rolling the sleeves up or just like sort of scrunching them up. 
So I don't know, I think I want to make the short sleeves so I can just pop a cardigan over it if my arms are cold. And then I sort of feel that I'm wasting that fabric because I've got two meters. I think that I'm, mine will probably take more than a meter. I can't see, I've just, I could be proved wrong, but I can't see the size I'm making that it will, I will be able to get that out of one meter because I don't know, it just doesn't seem long enough or something. I don't know, I'm, I'm maybe, con maybe convinced but if so, then I'm like, well, what do I do with the leftover? It's quite a lot to be like left over. So that has sort of put me off a bit, but I think I am just gonna go for it. And whatever I have left over, perhaps I can make a woven um, tank top. So there are a few free patterns, I think, floating around the internet. And I might linking in with that. Um, I will be making a video coming up, coming out on the 21st, I think, of February. I haven't filmed it yet, for So Frugal 22. So it's this year's version of the Frugal Frocks, but it's not dresses this time. So it's a free pattern, fabric from your stash, and just make a garment out of it in March. So I'm, quite, I'm looking forward to that. I have been struggling lately with trying to get onto mood fabrics, their sewing patterns on their part of the website. The website keeps crashing. So I will keep trying, but I know that there are other sources out there and other free patterns. So if I can't get that to work, I won't be recommending that. So stay tuned for that video. So it's coming out, what we on to say, the 11th, you'll see this 12th, no, 10th today, 11th tomorrow, about another week or so and that video will be hopefully filmed, edited, um, processed and coming out. But just to keep an eye out for that, I am taking part in that along with probably over 60 other sewing vloggers all talking about Sew Frugal. So there's gonna be a real buzz going around. But in the meantime, I'm thinking, what can I make? So I might make one of those blouses and then see what I've got left over. That could, oh, am I giving, am I giving clues away now of what I'm going to be using? Um, I wanted to show you, I don't know if you've been checking out the hashtag of Sew Your Colours 22. Lots of people when I first launched the challenge at the beginning of January put their colour palettes on the grid for all um, saying what season they were. And slowly but surely people have then started either finding that they have the fabrics in those colours in their colour palette in their stash starting to make things or they have got plans up and coming so i just wanted to highlight some of the ones that you've been sharing over on the grid for the so your colors 22 challenge for all the makes which are just for january i will probably do an update for february but i just want to keep it january so i've got a clear cut off so if you haven't found out what your color palette is click on the link down that I'm putting down below. It's for colorwise.me. You can do it as an app on your phone or you can use their website and upload a photo. Make sure that you're doing it in good daylight, not too strong sunlight because the colors may come out a bit strange. It is a bit tricky to get your eye color, but persevere. It is kind of a loose guideline of what colors suit you most in terms of your complexion and things, but it is coming out very accurate. Everyone who has used the app um, is saying that they agree with those colors and that people who've had their colors done by professional style like years ago or even recently, it is um, confirming the same color palette. Now, as I've said before, if there's a particular color that you like to wear that makes you happy and makes you feel good, but it's not in your official color palette, that's fine, just go ahead and wear what makes you feel good and happy. But this is to kind of narrow down choices so you've got a more cohesive, color coordinated wardrobe and then hopefully it will make you look your best and feel your best and obviously those shades may change slightly with the seasons and with if you get um, a suntan or something in the summer and your skin color darkens or lightens up in winter that may all pay, play into effect but I just wanted to share with you um, some of those makes that have been coming through on the grid and they just you can really tell that they are the right colors for that person for some of them really pop and they're colors that I can't necessarily wear because not everyone has the same color palette as me mine is called winter like I said so um, feel free to go and have a browse through so I'm highlighting the people who have tagged me in those posts if you want to have yours shared don't forget to tag me if you just want to join in on Instagram, just use the hashtag, just use the hashtag and don't tag me. Um, also, I just wanted to do a quick note that I think it was my last video, YouTube hid comments from me. So I had a couple of notifications that I had a comment and when I clicked on it, the comment wasn't there and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it on the video, I couldn't find it on my YouTube app either or even in like the back 
the back sort of room of um, my YouTube videos when I edit, it wasn't there at all. So I will always get back to you and always reply to every comment, but I just haven't seen some of them. I don't know where they are. And my last video says there's 35 comments and I think I can view just a handful, less than 10. So I don't know where all the rest of the comments are. So I haven't blocked you. I haven't deleted your comment. I just have no idea where they are. So please bear with me. Feel free to private message me on Instagram and say that I've put a comment and then I can know if um, there is an issue and then perhaps I can get in touch with YouTube. Is that what you're supposed to do? I don't know. So I will see you in my next video, but here are all the makes for January.